This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. So I now have a conceptual model. Time to add some information. At the logical model, we start identifying attributes, which translate to columns, and to keys. Once we've identified the keys, the relationships start making more sense. So I'll start with locations, since that's my base entity. So I double click on my locations, it brings up my information about it. You might want to create a short name, and this is how it will refer to it in the code. I'm going to come over here to my attributes. I'm going to use a surrogate key for my location ID. I had already decided that, so I'm going to create my loc ID. I'm going to say logically it's a number. I'm not going to worry about the precision of scale. I'm going to say it's my primary UID, so it's my unique identifier and that forces it to be mandatory. Now I want a loc name. Logically, that's going to be a varchar, string type information, and I'll say it's up to 50 characters. I'm going to make that mandatory, but it's not my primary ID. I do, however, want to make it unique. I only want to have loc name once, so I'm going to create a new So I just hit OK. All you have to do is double click on it again. You'll come back in, see your attributes. It saved off loc name. I just didn't click out the field. Come back to unique identifiers. Go to my attributes and you can see it put loc name. So I want to change this from key to loc name unique. Say OK. Come back to my attributes. And I want to do a loc description. So I'll go ahead and add another column. And that's also going to be a string. Click logical. It's a string, which is a varchar. And we'll say this one's 100. Apply that. And see it updated the name. Say OK. And now we have some attributes. We have a unique constraint and a primary key. I'm going to work on my employees. I double click my object. And I'm going to call it imp as my short name. Come to my attributes. I'm also going to use a circuit key here for my primary key. Call it imp ID. It's logically a number. I'm going to add another column. First name. It's logically a character string. I'll make that 50. Add last name. It's logically character. 50. We will add salary, logically numeric. We'll add their commission, logically numeric. And we will add a start date, which will be, that was commission. I didn't hit my plus. There we go. Start date. Logically, a date. It added the loc ID for me based on the relationship between locations and employees. Now, my imp ID, I want to make this my primary key. And then we say OK. So now we have attributes there. Finally, I'll create the department information. I'm just going to put a department ID and department name in here. So I'll give it a short name of Dept. Come to my attributes. It's got the location because of the relationship with the locations. I give it a depth ID, logical, numerical. This is my surrogate key. And I'll add a depth name. Logically, a string, varchar2. Yeah, I'll make that 50. Since my location name was 50, I'll keep it consistent. OK. So we have some basic attributes. Notice that I have my primary key, primary key, I don't have a primary key here. I need to fix that. You just double click on it, go to your attributes, click on the column and say primary UID. Now that I have the attributes and my keys, I can work on the relationships. And we can go ahead and take another look and see under the attributes, I have a loc ID and a depth ID. And I come to my departments, double click on it. In my attributes, I have my loc ID. And if we look in locations, 
Since none of the relationships went into locations, I don't have any surrogate keys from the other entities. And that's pretty much it for the logical model. Obviously, you can spend a lot more time working on various aspects, getting more detail, doing comments, notes, things like that. But this is a basic logical model.